Now, over the course of his military career, he has earned four Air Medals and has over 20 years of experience. And if I'm going to fly with anybody, I am going to fly with this guy. Here to talk to us about making lazy circles in the sky, welcome Mr. Zach Smith. Good evening, my name is Zachariah Smith, and I'll be uh, discussing some of Oklahoma aviation history with you tonight. Oklahoma aviation history starts in the 20, uh, beginning of the 20th century in Fort Sill, Oklahoma, where the Army aviation decides to bring a company of uh, aircraft to Fort Sill to start their training. Uh, <clears throat> it's named Henry Post in 1917, and from there, the Army starts using aircraft in many of its battles through World War I and World War II. Uh, Wiley Post actually takes his first flight down in Lawton around 1912, and he gets an airport named after him. He's done so much. He broke records uh, flying around the world from Los Angeles to Chicago, uh, and then, unfortunately, he passes away. Another uh, famous guys, Tom and Paul Braniff, start the first airline in the 1920s here in the state of Oklahoma doing Tulsa to Oklahoma City runs. And later they move it to Dallas Love Field and then they go bankrupt in the 80s. <clears throat> this guy right here is uh, Cessna. If you're a pilot, then you have logged time in a Cessna. I guarantee 99% of pilots have Cessna time. And he started his company in Enid, Oklahoma, and then moved on. John Atwood is an engineer. He worked as an engineer in OK, Oklahoma, near Muskogee, and flew, designed this monoplane. Later, he was the designer of the P-51, and later with Lockheed Martin, worked on the Apollo rocket. <clears throat> the 1940s, they bring Oklahoma manufacturing to the forefront and training. We, across the state, you get all kinds of training, and you get two major manufacturing plants. The <clears throat> Ardmore, Oklahoma becomes a major training base for uh, bomber pilots, and then later they become the United States Air Force, and they become transport pilots into the 50s. Later on, you get the manufacturing in 1940 in Tulsa, where Douglas comes in and starts building uh, B-25 bombers, and a lot of the bombers that come out of there, they build over 6,000 during that four-year span of World War II. Little known fact, that down south of us in Westheimer, it used to be a naval air station where they trained 6,000 pilots for the Navy, and they would go from here out to the Pacific, including the women who worked for the Navy. Out west in Altus, again, another aviation training facility, uh, later became a very important part of the Strategic Air Command for nuclear deterrent, and today they train many pilots in the C-17 and the KC-40 aircraft. Vance Air Force Base is another base that's still running today that trains Air Force pilots. It started in uh, 1940. Their claim to fame is that they have the command, first female commander, uh, Eileen Collins, of the Space Shuttle. And what's history in Oklahoma without talking about Tinker Air Force Base? Tinker Air Force Base is the largest MRO in the United States Air Force. They work on everything. They built 4,700 uh, sky trains. They work on everything from the KC-135, the B-52, the B-1, the, everything. And almost every engine is remanufactured or worked on there at Tinker Air Force Base. Whew. And last but not least is the spaceport, which is located in Clinton Sherman. Its history starts as a training base for the Navy. It's the second base that the uh, Navy sets up in Oklahoma. And it was a strategic air command base. They launched B-52s. And speaking of space, we Oklahomans have a lot of astronauts that come out of this state. And the University of Oklahoma and OSU, including the first Native American uh, astronaut and this lady right here, Jerry Cobb, she started flying aircraft at 12 years old, and she taught combat male pilots how to fly during the war. <clears throat> Later, she became a Mercury 13 astronaut, but she never went into space, unfortunately. If you have someone who's interested in space or wants the dream of going into space,
this is like the best museum in the Midwest, and I would take them out there. It's at Weatherford, Oklahoma, and it's uh, funded by uh, General Tom Stanford, retired. Oklahoma is like the largest, it's the MRO capital of the world. We do, we hire uh, 120,000 employees work on aircraft and logistics and all kinds of programs across the state. Oklahoma is geared for a great future, including air mobility, which with the I-40 and two uh, 35 corridors, can you imagine getting on one of these in Norman and have being in downtown Oklahoma City in five minutes? Man, that traffic would be great. Anyway, Zachariah Smith, I hope to see you guys make your own lazy circles in the sky. Have a great evening. <laughs> I told you I want to fly with that guy. Y'all give it up for Zach one more time.